Huh? Oh, <laughs> hi there, viewers in TV land. Welcome to a brand new episode of Surely You're Joking, Mr. Science. As some of you may remember from last month, me, Mr. Science, decided to support the Striking Writers Guild of America, like many of my fellow TV stars, by growing a beard. Well, now the strike is over, so upon strict, very strict indeed, orders from the FCC, uh, the beard's got to go. So while I finish shaving that off, let's welcome back world-renowned scientific expert, my mother. Hello again, viewers. Today's science fact is this. The perceived frequency of a wave depends on the velocity of the source of the wave. Now, back to Mr. Science. Thanks, Mom. Let me just finish up here. <laughs> Not looking bad. Ah. All right, viewers, now that I'm clean shaven again, let's prepare to dare to experiment. Viewers, to address America's energy crisis, today I'm going to be doing some experiments with electricity. And let me stress, don't mess around with this stuff at home yourself. Electricity can be very, very dangerous. So kids, leave it to the trained professionals. Adults, leave it to the professionals, please. I suspect that more than a few of you at home have tried the classic experiment with electricity where you drag your feet on the rug and then go up and zap your brother or sister. <laughs> uh, good times. I've got a device here that works on much the same principle called the Van de Graaff Generator, invented by Robert Van de Graaff. This device does the same thing you do when dragging your feet on the rug. The belt in the middle is made out of rubber like the bottom of your shoes piece of rug in the blue part at the bottom. When you drag your feet on the rug, or when this belt scrapes the rug, it scrapes up lots and lots of tiny particles called electrons. Don't bother looking for them there in video. But when you get enough electrons moving the right way, that's how you get electricity. This device, however, can give us a little bit more electricity, static electricity, I should say to be precise, a little bit more than you could dragging your feet on the rug. Let's fire it up and see how it's going. On a good day, you might be able to get seven or 8,000 volts of static electricity jumping out of your body just by dragging your feet on the rug. But the Van de Graaff generator, I'd estimate today we're somewhere around 40,000 volts of static electricity. The force that makes electricity work is called electromagnetism. Because it makes electricity work, it also makes magnets work. See, electromagnetism, electricity, anyway. Electromagnetism works because of charges. Those tiny, tiny, tiny parts, the electrons, they all have the same charge. They're all exactly the same, and their charge is called negative. Thank you, Benjamin Franklin. The thing about charges is, charges hate other charges that are the same. Charges want to be near a charge that's different, not one that's the same. So when this ball comes up with electrons with negative charges, they try to jump off to something that's not negatively charged, like, say, this. Just like with two magnets, if you take two charges that are the same, they repel, they push each other away. Allow me to demonstrate with one of my patent-pending expensive science devices. Take it away, charges. Once I turn this device on, the dome fills up with extra electrons, negatively charged. This pie plate fills up with extra electrons, negatively charged. Those two charges are the same, both negative, so they repel and push each other away. 
And of course, it doesn't just work with cheap dessertware. How about the all-important styrofoam packing peanut? I'll try to balance some of these on top. This may be the most difficult part of any experiment. Observe once again, extra electrons. And off they go. As many of you may know at home, there's only one thing that can improve just about any science experiment. Toilet paper. Also difficult to balance. Let's see if I can get this up here. Take it away, negative charges. Let's see if the world's most ghostly toilet paper will do its thing. Excellent. Square by single ply square, the paper is getting repelled or pushed away from the Van de Graaff generator. Ah, it's coming for me, get away. Whereas if I drain off the negative charges, down it goes. Let them back in, it pushes away again. Drain it off, down it goes. That's enough of that. Just in time for Halloween. See, Joe the plumber would have been better than the subprime mortgage guy. As many of you probably recognized from having seen the Van de Graaff generator before, there is one classic experiment. We can try adding a negative charge to, say, a person. As I carefully attempt to see if this box will hold my weight and dry the hands off, let me add a few negative charges to me. And you can see, it starts to have a repulsive effect, and my hair has often been called repulsive. By charging me up, my whole body gets a negative charge, and uh, the lightest part of me, the hair, gets pushed away the most. How am I doing? Excellent. Well, as much as I'd like to keep this hair due, there may be photo ops around, so I'll step down. carefully turn that off. Whew. Fortunately for Mr. Science, every day is a bad hair day. <sighs> when it comes to electricity, there's a couple different ways that those tiny little electrons can move around. Sometimes they move in a way that's called DC or direct current. That means they move in one direction. It could be that way, that way, that way, whatever, but only one way. When you plug something into a wall socket, however, that uses a kind of current called alternating current, or AC. Think about AC, much, much more dangerous than DC is. I was just touching somewhere around 40,000 volts of DC electricity on the Van de Graaff generator, A-OK. -okay. Your typical wall socket, only 110 volts of AC. This is easily enough to kill you dead like that. Please don't mess around with that, seriously. 